Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 479 George Sister Podcast. Everyone, as always, I'm Tyler. And joining me, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? Well, I'm not dead, so I'm good. <laughs> That's good. I'm, I'm glad you're oh, not dead, man. personally. <laughs> well, honestly, this week was Take pretty hand. fun. It was pretty relaxing, chill, as opposed to working last week. You know, dealing with a whole bunch of random crazies. But, uh... Yeah, man, there was a bunch of fun stuff. It was a bunch of fun stuff, especially like when uh, I'm trying to play a little bit more like Splatoon Two or some during the over the past week and stuff. I just gotta say though, just trying to prep myself for Splatoon Three when that initially does go through and launch and stuff. Splatoon Two single player, man, it's it's a fantastic experience in my honest opinion. But uh, other than that, though, other than that, though, I've just been keeping track of like certain parts of the gaming news. Kind of excited for that Pokemon present thing tomorrow, but mm-hmm. we'll go into detail about that a little bit later on. But Tyler, how have you been doing? Oh, better now. Doing okay. You know, it's been a it's been a week. It's been a long week of work as usual. Take my car to the shop. It's not great looking great. Um, you know, fourteen hundred dollars in, and still might have the problem. Not might not have the problem fixed. So, yeah. Woohoo. Um, so yeah, that's not fun. Um, but hopefully I, sh- I should, I should know Monday if it's going to be good or not. So none like that sitting on, sitting on your shoulders all the week, all weekend long, but, uh, yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm doing a little better. Um, yeah, I, I had something, I don't remember. I, I had a whole, I was going to do say some shit. Freaking show. I already forgot it. It's, it's over. It's gone. It's out the window. It's out, it's out, it's out the brain. I told Gables, I think I'm finally, I'm losing it, uh, where I can't, I'm, I'm having a terrible time remembering things, uh, now. So it's not you got so much stuff processing at once and you have multiple different things and all of a sudden you try to do one thing and you end up forgetting halfway through when you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely I can relate to, dude. It's yeah, it's like it's like my Dropbox now, uh where we like send you send me all the files out for our podcast. Um it's it's been close to full, now it's full. Uh so now I gotta delete things out to put more things in there. And that's kinda where I'm at now with my brain. Okay. I think I'm at that I think I hit that point now. With my brain, where I just gotta start deleting shit um, to remember other things. Um, I'm gonna start forgetting work, and maybe that'll make me feel better. <laughs> I don't know if that's <laughs> gonna work, but we'll start. I'll start there, and then we'll see how that goes. But uh, no, I'm doing okay. Otherwise, I uh, got this delicious beer here, so that's helping. Uh, Louis over there eating being good. I gave him a, a bone, so he's being he's pretty happy right now, too. So that makes me happy as well. Um, but yeah, Gables. This is the Drunk Dashers podcast where we mostly talk about video games and I get to drink beer uh, and bullshit with you. Um, if you like us, you like the show, uh, wherever you're watching at or listening to us at, please like, follow, subscribe. Um, if you look in our show notes, uh, there should be a thing called Linktree. Uh, click on that link and that will um, show you, that'll take you to a little a different page and it has a link to everything we're on, all the Facebook, Twitters. YouTube's, iTunes, Spotify, wherever, pods or casts, we're on it. Um, if you're on YouTube, give us a big thumbs up, please. Follow, subscribe, share, comment, please too. Uh, you know, shares as well. If you, five stars wherever you are, wherever you listen to us at, really appreciate that. I really, honestly, um, if you could just click the like button on YouTube, uh, it's located right around uh, Gable's junk area. Uh, that will make uh, he'll, he will feel that wherever he's at. It's like Pillsbury Doughboy. He'll just be walking down Walmart going, woohoo, and that will be him. Uh, he'll know, we'll know we got a like. He'll text me. He's like, we got a like. I'm like, oh, did we? And I'll look it up. We got a like. So, um. <laughs> could you just imagine, like, just everyday situations or something like that? If they click the like button and it's just the most inopportune moment, it's like, just get my coffee with the barista. And all of a sudden, she gets me the coffee. Oh, oh, God. What was that? It's like, oh, um. It's not you, I swear. Coffee. Yeah, it's like it's like she's like really cute. And you're like it's like it's not you, I swear. But like, well, I mean, it's kind of you, but it's not it's not you. But it's you. Uh, I'm <laughs> it's just digging myself deeper in yeah. my mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's like God. And you just like get like and all of a sudden you just see me getting tossed out of Safeway. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Gables was never allowed back at Starbucks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had a good run. Uh, but yeah, no. If you if you like all this and just two dumb guys talk about video games, uh. Please, uh, like I said, do all that, please. I would really appreciate that. Uh, a little bit of news. Um, 
We're going to talk a little bit more about the Pokemon. I guess we can just fucking do it now. Gables Pokemon days tomorrow. So, uh, we're already on it. Uh, so right. Tentatively Gables and I are discussing possibly doing a live react for the first time ever tomorrow morning. Uh, it's tentative. We're not guaranteeing it teeing anything. Uh, it's just, it's 6 a.m. Gables time on a Sunday. Um, and, uh, this is definitely an experimental type of thing and stuff. We're like contemplating possibly doing like live stream, like of like reaction stuff. Obviously we're going to try to make sure nothing gets copyrighted while we're trying to do this shit. But... Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's well, I guess it's you, maybe not it's Nintendo. So going around. Yeah. So we might do that at the very least. If it's worth, if we don't do a live reacts, um, if it's worth talking about, we will come back tomorrow with a, on Sunday, I guess for you guys, it's today. It's Saturday night for us. Um, we will be back sometime Sunday with a mini podcast discussing the news. If it's worth talking about, if it's not, right. then, um, we'll just, we won't. Um, but cause you never know with these things. There's been ones where they talk about Pokemon sleep for 20 minutes and, and Pokemon shirts and Pokemon brush your teeth. Um, and then there's been ones where they fucking announce fucking Pokemon Snap. So you never know what we're going to get. It's going to be one of the two. Uh, if we live react, I want it to be as bad as possible. If we don't live react, I want I want Pokemon Legends or Arceus DLC. Um, but Gables, while we're talking about um, I don't really have any like uh, like big like predictions, honestly. Um, but I do think because they've been doing like all shit all week, like announcing stuff for Pokemon Unite, some uh, yeah. brilliant diamond uh, updates, stuff like that. Uh, like small, like little incremental things every day. I feel like they're getting the little things out of the way to talk about something. I don't want to say big, but something substantial at least. What about you? All right. Well, honestly, I kind of feel like that uh, it's going to be a little bit minuscule in terms of what they go through and announce. Apparently, yes, there have been rumblings up of the potential unveiling, maybe announcement of like a Detective Pikachu 2. I mean, yeah. that has been being thrown around inside of development since like uh, the uh, initial thing on Switch when Detective Pikachu first came out on the 3DS and stuff. And then they said they were working on the sequel on the Switch or wherever the heck yeah, that was it was. 2019 they announced that. That was 2019. It was the same one they announced Pokemon Sleep and Shirt. That they yep. were supposed to, we were supposed to get Pokemon the Detective Pikachu, the first one. It was supposed to be ported, and then we were supposed to get two, and that was three years ago. So, Yeah, so it could be an update for anything with that, but I can tell you this. What we're not going to be seeing is a Generation 9 no, no. of the Pokemon games. That is not going to be covered during this thing, and that's the thing. That's the reason why I feel like this is going to be kind of smaller in scope in regards to what they go forth and do with this Pokemon Presents. I mean, yeah. if you're going to go forth with something like Gen 9 or something like that, I mean, let's be perfectly honest with you. If they're going to go with a Gen 9, they got to use Pokemon Legends Arceus as a base for that shit because you can't present us with that at the beginning of this year and stuff like that and then go back simultaneously to what you did previously with Sword and Shield. With, like, X and Y. Yeah. Not X and Y. Sword and Shield. That's why I had it right the first time. Yeah. But uh, I would expect to see... Possibly some teasers of Pokemon Legends Arceus DLC. I mean, they can go forth and just do an announcement. Oh, yeah, we're going to be bringing DLC, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. We'll have more details at a later date. You know, maybe like in June or like in May or whatever the hell. Yeah. The fact remains is this is probably, this is definitely one of the more successful Pokemon games that they've actually, they have launched for quite a long while. Like ever. In terms of uh, performance wise, let's say on Switch. In regards to rating wise, I mean, holy shit, this is like one of the highest rated Pokemon games on Switch, and that's over things like, say, the Let's Go games or something like that. That's definitely it's kind of match, kind it's of an, bar and bar with Sword and Shield, honestly. Yeah, it's but, an eighty-four on Open Critic, so yeah, which Open Critic's all we and, care about based off our league. So, well, yeah, exactly the point, man. But it's like the thing about the Pokemon Legends Arceus is it does a lot of things right. And uh, that's part of the reasons why I don't feel like we're going to get an announcement for any type of Gen 9 news at this Pokemon Direct. Is because, for one, it's way too soon after Arceus. And also, yeah. too, it's, if they're going to go forth and announce something, it's going to be early next year. That's yeah. what I personally would feel. Yeah. I, I, they don't They rarely, They don't ever announce, like, those... I shouldn't say ever. Like, whenever, the only time they ever really announce brand new, big-time 
uh, Pokemon games is it's like the Pokemon presents right before an E3. Uh, yeah. Like that's where they announced like Sun and Moon and stuff like that. So um, I don't think it's that because the same studio that makes the same team that makes the, the new gen games uh, made Legends Arceus and it would just cut the legs out of, um, you know, Legends Arceus, which is one of the fastest selling Pokemon games of all time. One of the fastest, it's, yep. I think the second fastest selling Switch game ever behind um, uh, Animal Crossing. So it'd be kind of dumb yeah. to announce that. But the only thing I could, like, I think the most substantial thing that's going to come out of it is like a Legends Arceus update. Maybe they announced some, like, maybe they just announced they're going to be doing, like, we're going to, there will be DLC in the future and they give us, like, an idea with it. Um, it's only 14 minutes long. So I'm not, this isn't going to be, like, a huge thing. But, like, yeah, it's, the, it's the only not. thing I can really see is, like, maybe, excuse me, maybe we get, like, um, mystery dungeon type shit like spin-off stuff but like oh that I, would be interesting if like they went that route too because it's because uh the pokemon like mystery dungeon thing not just that but there was one that's tied with uh diamond and pearl and stuff like that i forget which ones it goes explorers of time or whatever the hell yeah there's spin-off games inline games that some pokemon fans absolutely love and they go with some like a remaster from that i could potentially see but uh Honestly, I think what we're more likely going to see is more Pokemon Legends Arceus news, something possibly with Detective Pikachu. If there's something with Pokemon Sleep, I think I hope so. Boy. God, God, Gables, if if we miss the reaction, it's awful. I'm going to be so pissed. I'm going to be so heartbroken. <laughs> but if it's good, I'll be I'll be happy. But I want if it's awful and we don't react to it, I'm going to be upset. I'm going to be really sad about it. Um, so, but yeah, just keep an eye out on this. Um, and we'll, you know, if you, we'll, we'll have a, a shorter episode, most likely tomorrow of some sort. Um, if not, just, you know, look on our Twitter and I'll post an update whether or not we're doing it. Um, moving on Gables to some other big news here. Uh, rumors of this actually could be coming. Uh, we could be hearing about this as early as Monday. Uh, some are saying, um, and I guess I can correlate this in. I'm going to correlate one of our other news topics for the week. That was going to be a smaller thing. Um, so it's going to be kind of all together here. So apparently the uh, PlayStation Spartacus, which is like they're kind of like quasi uh, like Game Pass type of thing. Um, so Jeff Grubb here from VentureBeat, um, he, uh, from GamesBeat, he kind of came out. He's one of the people that like kind of broke initially that they're planning on doing the, the Spartacus. And that it was supposed to come out in spring. We're kind of get we're yeah. you know we're it's into February now, so we're getting to that springtime. Um, so some stuff has come out about apparently. So originally from like some of the reports was is gonna be three tiers, uh, and now we got some more updates. All this and like Jeff Grubb did say like this isn't set in stone. Some of these things can like the pricing and some of the stuff could change. But basically what we got here is that. Uh, I'm looking at my phone, by the way. I'm sorry, guys, but my computer is being weird, so I don't want to stress it out anymore. Uh, so currently, the tiers are called Essential, Extra, and Premium, and those names could change as long as with some of the stuff that might some of the stuff might be around on the services. But the uh, the the bottom one, Essential, would be ten dollars, which is basically just PlayStation Plus as we know it now. Uh, the Extra would uh, well, I'll, I'll break it down here, but then. That one's supposed to be apparently going to be like $13. And then the premium one is going to be $16. So um, yeah, it's kind of a box here. So PlayStation uh, Essential, which is the bottom tier, the $10 one, uh, will include like your monthly games, like the PS Plus games we get. It's basically, it's just PS Plus as we know it now. Um, PS Plus Extra will include like uh, a game catalog. Um, so it sounds like basically like PS Plus Extra will essentially just be like, um, uh, like, PS Now and PS Plus combined mm -hmm. together, which is, I guess, kind of, is that kind of, it's kind of a discount. Kind of like similar to what I have now, except yeah. I'm paying $13 a month. Yeah, you're paying, I guess, like, what, $110 a year or something like that. So it's like... Yeah, possibly. It's about the same price, I guess. If you were to buy a year's worth of PS Plus and a year's worth of PS Now, I think it's like $110. And this would... Probably. This would be a little more... So it's about the same price. Um, and then PS Plus Premium... Will include uh, the monthly games, game catalog, the ability to stream games, classic games, and game trials. Um, so it goes on here. So like basically, I'm just gonna kind of read some of the stuff that Jeff got put here. So uh, PS Plus Essential is just the PS Plus that we already know. Ten dollars a month to get monthly games, and you can add to your uh, back catalog. 
or to your library rather. Um, PS Plus Extra, meanwhile, gets you a monthly uh, gets you the monthly games and the game catalog for thirteen dollars a month. The game catalog is a library of hundreds of older downloadable games. This seems like so you rip the downloadable uh, catalog from PS Plus from PS Now rather. So it's basically the ones that you can't download. So that's like PS One and PS Two games, uh, not including right. PS Three games. PS Plus Premium uh, gets you all the all the above and then everything else for sixteen dollars a month. That includes uh, the PS Now streaming capabilities. Uh, PS Plus. You also get a library of classic games as well as a new Game Trials feature. Game Trials enable you to download and start game, uh, playing the full versions of new PlayStation games. This is likely a time limit function, which is similar to how uh, Game Trials work on EA Play services. From um, you know, with, like we talk about like all the time with like uh, like it's on Game Pass stuff like that. But it's also it's been a separate service for months. Uh, he did reiterate again here that all these prices and names could change, um, but. Uh, the, you know, we do already know that they've already said that, like, kind of how this is the date. Like, PlayStation games, like the big, like, Horizon or the next God of War will not be on here day one. Um, mm. We could talk, we could talk about that more if you want to. Um, I guess Sony is moving into a testing phase in the next few weeks, and it could be announced. And the new de- details of this membership uh, program are uh, scheduled to be re- announced in March. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Gables. I mean, one thing you did add this in here. I want to talk about that real fast too. We can talk about it. Is Shadow Warrior sure. Three will be uh, be the first ever PlayStation Now game to be a day one launch title? Um, yeah. What was some... interesting about what was interesting about that news about Shadow Warriors Three was that this was a little news launch and little nugget that was like uh, released before in regards to Jeff Grubb going into details about more about the project Spartacus and stuff. And I thought initially it's like, Hey, where there's smoke, there's fire. Here we have Sony having on PlayStation now a day one, like a new release on their day one, not first party mind you, but it's a shadow warrior three. It's a devolver digital game. It's a third party quintessential. That's getting a major push in regards to PlayStation. Now it's more, may not be the biggest game. And that's, and quintessentially the game itself and how important that is and stuff quality wise you know that's not important but the most important thing is they are allowing like games like date and date on their launch on playstation now and so that in and of, of itself kind of thought you know i was tossing around the idea in my head it's like hey if they're going to do that with like a game like say Shadow Warrior 3 and stuff like that, of course they're going to do it for other like future possible third party games or potential first party if they really wanted to. But uh, I still feel like if this holds true in regards to that, I mean, quintessentially for the premium tier, it will be like the most questions asked and stuff. It's like, one, what are what classics would they even have going through it available? Would it be a PS1 through 3? Would it be downloadable? Is it just streaming only? Because mm-hmm. if it's streaming only, especially for what they have currently right now with PlayStation Now, it's like not a lot of people really like the PS3 streaming. I mean, yeah. I speak for myself roast mostly because I'm someone that, hey, if I'm going to play a game on the PS3, like through PlayStation Now and stuff like that, I want to know how good the quality goes through. And I've tried playing like streaming stuff, PS3 games on, say, the PS4 Pro and also the PS5, where it's like, it's okay, but there are delays, even with a wire connection. That's from my personal internet, like, like my personal internet provider and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure that there are some gamers out there that can't even get that. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as colossal as, say, like, with a Kingdom Hearts cloud version on Switch, but it's still, like, it's still, like, uh, an... It's not an actual full-on alternative for, like, downloading the game manually and just going through and just have that emulation type of point. Okay. I can play this. No delays. No types of, like, noticeable errors or whatsoever. So, the initial thing that I'm thinking of in regards to classics and stuff, they would have to have something, say, PS1 to possibly, maybe, a PSP or whatever, but... I think that's wishful thinking on the PSP part. But at that minimum, they'd need to at least have some recognizable PS1 and PS2 games available for this initial premium tier if they're going to be touting that. I mean, I don't know. Tyler, what were you thinking about this? Yeah, I don't... It's tough because, you know, like, 
I've talked about it and I've even when we started this topic, I like kind of mentioned it. It's like their game pass and a lot of people have been taking at that. And I'm wondering, this doesn't sound like a game pass. And like, they don't, really, I don't know. People keep saying they need to have a game pass competitor. And I don't believe, I don't think that's true. And it's something I talk about. And this isn't like me defending. Cause I would love if they just did a game pass, and they put their games in our day one. I'd save a ton of money uh, with that. But um, they, like we talk about, they don't need to, do like they don't need to put the day one games on this service, like we like Horizon right. Zero Dawn sold over twenty million copies. Got a war sold over twenty million copies. Uh, the last two uh, Spider Man games have sold over twenty million copies. Like, uh, even like you know Ghost of Shima has sold over ten million copies. Like they're not doing, you know Nintendo Switch numbers, but nobody's doing Nintendo Switch no. numbers. Uh, but like those games are selling extremely well, and like the but PlayStation is the backbone of Sony, where Microsoft. We talk about this. Like they can afford to lose hundreds of millions of dollars on Game Pass because they're and they've talked about it. they're not making a profit off Game Pass yet, and they can afford to lose and also invest hundreds of billions of dollars into buying studios and losing <laughs> while the while losing hundreds of millions of dollars a year on Game Pass uh, to build this in five ten years from now maybe it's something bigger, um, but you know like like I said PlayStation they can't afford to do that uh, and their games are selling they've they've had a constant great flow of games the last two three generations really probably since they started uh for the most part um but i'd say the last decade have been killing even more um you know where like they come out and the regularly game of the year contenders um where xbox hasn't been that and this was kind of like xbox was like you know what we talk about like their their big exclusives that were few and far between you know, they were Quantum Break and like Halo 5 was a disappointment. Halo Wars 2 sold half a million copies. A Halo game, even though I know it's not a, you know, a straight, you know, it's not Halo 6 or Halo 5. It's not a numbered Halo game. It's Halo Wars 2. It's a Halo game. It sold half a million copies. Um, mm. So they've had, you know, they've had, they've had that decade there of struggling. And we've seen, we're seeing the fruit of the labors now the last, since Phil Spencer took over. It's like we're finally starting to see the light the thing we've been talking about for years now of like, they're saying all the right things. They're doing all the right things. Now we just need to see the games. Um, right. You know, and sorry, I'm getting off topic with that. But that's a point, though, where I always say, like, oh, if they don't do day one games, it's like, that's stupid if they do that. Like, no, it's stupid business-wise for them to do it. And I would love if they did it because I would, I mean, I buy, you know, I, I'm going to buy the next God of War. I'm going to buy Forspoken. I'm going to buy what, like, those stu- most of those studios, the games that come out, I'm going to buy those games. I'm going to love them. Uh, but if Sony did like Game Pass, let's say on the equivalent of Microsoft doing it and offering their first party games like day and date on day one, like through their like a Game Pass like service or something like that. I mean, hell, hardly anybody. I mean, there would be people that would buy their physical retail like games and mm-hmm. like seventy dollars plus a pop and stuff, mind you. The, but you, there would be so many people wanting to invest inside that subscription just to play. Yeah day and date like first party sony games you, know? you would need 30 to 40 million subscribers overnight to make that worth that money absolutely um and there's not that many playstation 5s out there and i'm assuming this is gonna be a ps5 only thing at least of right now uh we there's no confirmation i guess and i shouldn't maybe i shouldn't assume that um but but here okay go ahead well i'm gonna go ahead and let you finish your thought okay um go ahead because i'm gonna go i'm gonna ramble for a minute all right so I thought about this while we were talking, and it kind of suited sort of like uh, it kind of suited something quite perfectly. This kind of feels like in some of their tiers that was presented that Jeff Gubb Grubb was talking about, sort of like a con- almost feels like a consolidation of regards to tying certain things together. Say with PlayStation Plus and uh, mm-hmm. PlayStation Now, you know, only now it's like it's up subscriptions like ten dollars for this. And thirteen dollars for like for this type of like offering and stuff like that. The only major difference we know so far is like potential downloading of like classic like uh, games for what they're going through. But this definitely kind of feels like not like say a Game Pass like thing, but more like a consolidation of what they got. Only maybe charging incremental monthly thing a little bit more than what they currently are doing. That's what the impression I'm getting from like say Jeff Grubbs, like rumors that he's going through and mm. obviously it's not going to be one-to-one and stuff. It's just, 
it's just that idea of like what if this is just like a lot of consolidation that sony's just doing with their playstation plus service and their playstation now tying them both together as sort of a package deal and then like having a select few games to offer sort of a premium thing because if they're not going the extra mile like say what microsoft is doing like say with their first party game pass content then you know a lot there are probably going to be some games we're going to be looking at this like okay what we're you know like why will we go through and play you know pay for the premium thing if we're only going to get this amount of stuff you know yeah i well and can i go back for uh, for touch that my my kind of my like when I was talking about, like, I don't I want to. The problem is, it's gonna get compared to Game Pass, and probably I guess it's fair to do it when you're looking at it's gonna be a dollar more than Game Pass uh, right. a month. Um, but I, I feel like this is more like a combination of EA Play and the Nintendo Online service. Yeah, that's but that's better, <laughs> but possibly good. Where last week we bitched and ranted about the way Nintendo's doing it by kind of like slowly. Tiny, like giving us like the tiniest little drip of like games drip here and there, feeding. yeah. But like not even good drip feeding, like drip feeding us bad NES Coffee games. Grounds. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's actually like it looks like Coffee Grounds, but it's actually sand. It's kitty litter. It's kitty litter. Gables, they're giving us fucking kitty litter. Uh, and then they label it Maxwell House. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh. Uh. But uh. Like if this comes out and it's like it has like all the big PS1, PS2 games that you want. Obviously, the big the one the licensed games aside that we know that those are just kind of a nightmare. Uh, but if it has all the big ones that you care about and you want, the ones you think of, you know, it's all on there right away. Um, then they have like these game trials, like kind of like what EA Play does, where they give you ten hours. But like maybe this is different, where like obviously some games don't need ten hours. Some probably only gonna be two or three. Like. They give us 10 hours of Grand Turismo 7, let's say. It's like, I'm going to play... I probably won't even finish the 10-hour thing. Whereas, like, that might stop people from buying it because you give them, like... Yeah, but, I, uh, yeah. Uh, or if it's, like, a, a, a uh, like Uncharted 5 or something, hypothetically. Like, 10 hours of that, you played half the fucking game. Uh, so, it's going to be probably based off of that a little bit. Um, I doubt they're going to give us, like, discounts, though, on games like... Uh, yeah. But that'd be kind of a smart move. That'd make it... If like, because they give you ten percent off on EA Play, um, they give us ten percent off. If it's a game that you can't finish like within a span of a weekend. Yeah, but it, like, it'd be smart because like, say they give us ten percent off, you know, that you know, that it's, even if they spend sixty three, that's that sixty three dollars that they're getting a hundred percent of instead of getting, True. I think sixty percent of seventy if they bought it at Walmart. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I, I think it, we should be looking at this more like an EA Play Nintendo Online service. Uh, hybrid rather than a game pass, but it's like, it's not going to happen. And like at that price point, it's going to be hard to separate it for a lot of people. Um, and I don't think sure. it will. And I, so, and I guess that's, we, but when you're at that price point, you're going to be com- compared to those things. And that's, that's fair. Um, but, uh, and then I think it just depends on like how many, like these, these indie games we're going to get that are um, their day one or like these, maybe we might get some, slightly bigger double a games i'm not i'm not i don't think we're gonna get like right. a, i don't think we're gonna get like an outriders level of game but maybe they get like i don't would they do mlb the show on day one i don't think so because the majority of people buy it on there anyways uh but um right. i yeah I, I wonder like we, we start seeing some more stuff like that uh they would need to have they would need to have content that would not only allure to longtime playstation fans but it has to be games that are recent enough to where it would entice people to go for them. And like a collection of enticing game releases that they would go through and actually want to invest that premium tier into. Yeah. And I think we're going to see a lot of, we're going to see more, uh, you know, we're probably going to see more PS4 games in there. Um, and maybe some more recent like PS5 type games, but I'm not expecting Hell, even like, if you in, even if you toss in like a good assortment of PS2 classics or something like that. Like, yeah fuck about these nice yeah so i don't i'm not like super pumped for this i'm going in open-minded though uh yeah. i've seen like I, I mentioned like our talk ship group and there's a lot mostly a lot of negative comments about it and i my point was like uh i'm not gonna try to defend it but i'm like i'm going in open-minded i'm not gonna like bash this i'm not gonna like get my hopes up too high if it you know like i'm just kind of like in the middle i'm not you know i'm, I'm not you know I'm, i don't 
I my the biggest thing for me is like if it comes out and you still have to stream PS3 games, that will be the that's the only thing I'm expecting, and and hopeful for. Um, honestly, that's the most hope because I really just want to play Metal Gear Solid 4 again, uh, but I don't want to stream it because I was actually gonna get PS now last summer, but then I was like, oh fuck, you still gotta stream these fucking things, because uh, I wanted to just play Metal Gear Solid 4. Uh, yeah, and then like Team Eco because I never played. That's like the one Japan Studio game that I never, I never played. I'm like, I'm not. Fuck that. Uh, so if it comes, you know, I, I just that's the big thing I, I I I want. And if they figured out how to get that to work, that's great. If it's not, it's like eh, it's, it's kind of waste of time. But like, I don't know, it's also got to be like more substantial. You can't be giving us like, you know, if they're gonna like add these like bigger th- games that have like sub- a little more substantialness to it. Right. If they want to try to push this a little bit more than those things. They can't be giving us like fucking Borderlands three or something like six months from now. No, like no, that would not satisfy. No, uh, so I think I don't know. Like I said, I'm I'm not I'm going to open minded. I'm not going to bash this thing. I'm but like, uh, but kind of going into my next point here is that apparently there's been a lot like there's a, the news of this coming out uh, in March and like apparently like as early as like Monday. Apparently there's been some talks of something happening, um, mm. but there's been rumors of a state of play or PlayStation showcase uh, in the month of March. Um, mm. And this is like, this will be like, it's some people are saying like, this is the one of the bigger ones. Uh, we had one in back in, I think August or September. Um, right. These that are like not small. Yeah. Well, yeah. So like that one, that was like the one where they showed off for spoken. We got a release date for for spoken. They, we got to see right. gameplay of God of war Ragnarok. Like I've always talked about like, um, uh, Somebody always talk about state of plays. People go crazy about state of plays, but it's like I say it every time. It's like state of plays. They keep them unless they like, unless it's like we've seen like the Grand Trismo and uh, what's the Ghostwire Tokyo. Like we see that stuff. Yeah. Like they'll make a point to say, hey, this will be here, uh, but they're never big, huge ordeals. They're never like big, big things. There's never big, huge surprises at state of plays. The biggest surprise we ever got out of state of play was Resident Evil Three. That was the biggest announcement we ever got with one. So they do when they do this. If it's if it's, my, I'll get more excited if it's like a showcase type of thing, where if it's not called state of play, unless it's like a state of play, and they announce this fucking Spartacus and whatever it's gonna be called. Uh, apparently, this is there's gonna be a huge like store overhaul as well. This is just gonna be like a um, so the store's gonna be drastically different because the, the PlayStation store is essentially the same as it was on four on the PS5, which I guess that makes sense though because I guess the Xbox is the same way. You kind of have to when you're crossing generations over but um yeah uh apparently there's some other like there's been some rumors of like uh some stuff going on with like god of war uh like some website that sells games put in there put uh i can't remember it's like venezuela from venezuela or something like that um put a put a june 2022 date uh on for god of war but there's a couple months ago there's also some rumors that september 30th would be release date for god of war but it sounded like more that that was like a, a placeholder because that's the last day of the quarter, which we see all, yeah. we see all the time where it's th- th- that was always the case. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't know um, if, like I said, like I could very well e- easily see this thing as a blog post, the, Sp- the Spartacus stuff. Um, but if a lot of people like it sounds like this isn't just like made up Internet stuff. This is like, you know, a lot of people that, the, the big people that, that the big leakers out there, like the Jeff Grubbs and the people that like report a lot of things, um, you know, that leak a lot of things, they're not the ones directly saying it, but they're saying, they're also saying they've heard from people that are saying it. And like, it sounds like there's some, there's some fire to the smoke. Um, mm-hmm. What are you thinking, Gables? I'm thinking that this is going to be an interesting time in regards to March. That's what I feel personally, because if we have a PlayStation like state of play or something that's going to delve into like one of the meteor type of like state of plays or something where they have like say Project Spartacus front and center, or if they have got all Ragnarok details in regards to gameplay and the release date. And if it, is similar to that of like that Venezuelan site saying it's going to be releasing in June or something like that. We could potentially look for a jam packed June. Yeah. All things considering, but, uh, honestly, I'm of the mind. It's like, kind of like what you were thinking too. It's like, where well, there's smoke, there's fire. And I kind of feels like this leads towards, uh, March being a potentially announced heavy month. Yeah. That's what I kind of feel. 
Yeah. And apparently some of the stuff out of this is like, this is going to be like the big one that's going to like kind of set up the rest of the year. Kind of like, like you look at like the, the direct we had a couple weeks ago where it kind of right. filled in the gaps, like pretty much the rest of the year is pretty much filled out. We just don't have dates for a couple of games now. Like Zelt breath Before of the wild two. Well, yeah, but like we at least have, we pretty much know all the games are coming this year. It's just a matter of getting dates for them. Well, except for breath of the wild two, we don't know for sure, but like it's aimed for this year, but like, we're just waiting on dates for like Mario and the Mario plus Rabbids and Beta the three, uh, but everything else is pretty much. And then Metro Prime remaster, I guess it isn't officially. We'll confirmed, probably but... know by June. Yeah. So I mean, but like we pretty much like we know what's coming this year. It's just now like probably in June we'll get like if we get like an Nintendo Direct in June, like we normally do, then that will fill in the dates. But we at least we at least know what's coming, and I feel like if this is happening and this is like this is the big one. That's probably like, look, we're supposed to get a Final Fantasy 16 update in the spring. This makes sense. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a PlayStation exclusive. Um, so uh, I can see this. I'm hopeful. Um, I just don't do what they did last time where they announced it like a week and a half ahead of time. Just give me like two days. No, don't even give me two days. Just give me like an hour. Just tell me like an hour in advance. I don't even want to because I hate it. I hate <laughs> it. Just, I like to, I prefer the direct when they just, when they would give us like a day or two heads up. Like that's better. Uh, anything more than that is nuts. And then you got the people going, cause then you get at that point, you just got people going fucking crazy on the internet and then you don't know what's a rumor or what's just fucking people going crazy and what's lies. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And but, it's so easy to, to fake a lot of that stuff too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's like every time a, a Nintendo direct happens, uh, it leaks on the, on Reddit every time, but there's so many fake leaks that no one, that it just gets lost in the shuffle. Every time, and that's the every time. Part about it because we don't know which one's true and which. Yeah, one's ex- every time, but like a day later, someone like the entire uh, d- uh, direct actually leaked on Reddit before the direct, and you're like, okay, but then it's like nobody commented. But like, okay, but yeah, but there's fifty thousand other ones. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's cool. It's like that guy. Um, he like the I can't remember who it was. He was on the IGN's Nintendo podcast last week. Um, before the Your direct. Schneider. No, no, no. Well, it's a, it, like you wouldn't know the name, but um, John Cartwright, he made a fake Nintendo uh, leaker account and tweeted a bunch of like, uh, like this game is going to be announced as the direct. This game but made all like all these fake like leaks. And then after the direct happened, deleted all the, the leaks that all the fake. He basically made a bunch of tweets like saying Breath of the Wild 2 was going to be in, uh, the, be here. Like he just he, he tweeted like 100 things. I just do my shit at the wall. And then after the direct was over, he deleted all the ones that didn't turn out to be accurate. And then wow. people overnight, like this guy got like 20,000 followers and like he did it as a giant prank to show how easy it is to be a fake leaker. Uh, okay, it, that's pretty funny. Yeah. So that was, I thought that was pretty incredible. Uh, but so then that's, that's anyways, that guy, uh, moving on. Um, I don't know how much to say is this one Gables. Apparently, uh, call of duty, uh, 20, the 2023 Call of Duty will be delayed into 2024. Um, okay. We, we don't have a lot. So, like, uh, it was funny because, like, uh, Activision kind of, like, actually spoke out about the comment, but, like, they just um, didn't really announce it. They didn't really they didn't d- deny it, but they also didn't. Um, they didn't deny it, and they also didn't confirm it. Uh, they just said that oh. we have an exciting slate of premium free-to-play free, free to Call of Duty experiences for this year and next year and beyond. Um, and that was kind of like, yeah, that was it. Uh, That's pretty much just like, yeah. So some of the stuff out of here is for this originally came from Bloomberg. Uh, Sources familiar with the situation. Executives in charge of this franchise have made the decision early after. I got a fucking ad. Sorry, pop opening a blossom spot. Uh, executives in charge of the franchise have made the decision early after a recent entry in the series failed to meet expectations about Vanguard, obviously, leading them to believe that Call of Duty's current and annual cadence of releases was too rapid. The decision is reportedly unrelated to Microsoft um, buying them. Um, but the Call of Duty in 2022, which is Modern Warfare 2, is still on track. Um, so, yeah. So, like, the recent entry is most likely Call of Duty Vanguard, obviously, uh, which faced release competition with, like, Battlefield 2042, which obviously was uh, unperforming. And then you also have, like, Call of Duty Warzone, um, the previous report noted that Vanguard sales had also been suffering uh, due to players feeling fatigue of Call of Duty's constant release cadence. 
uh, making them less interested in buying a new <clears throat> buying a new entry every year. Um, so we we kind of talked about this like we there was always like we going into last uh, to Vanguard like a lot of people were talking about we talked about like there just wasn't a lot of buzz behind it but I mean that's no. what we but it's like we always talk about like that's why I always talk about like why I like to look at NBDs because like it makes me look outside the our bubble of like hardcore gamers where like it's the biggest franchise still going. It was it immediately was the number one selling game of the year. As soon as it came out, um, it was, you know, and then uh, black ops cold war was number two best selling game of the year. Modern warfare from 2019 was the number 10 best selling game of the year last year. Um, so these games are obviously huge. Um, but we, I think I wonder if like, cause we went, we went from world war two to modern warfare to like, Cold War kind of sort of like right. 80s I think 70s 80s uh, spy game to back to World War Two. Um, yep and All people circle yeah and people love you know people were over World War Two, and then they were really excited about Modern Warfare and then they kind of went back again and you know we're just it's, it's the same it's just, we're just that same thing where it's we've been at for the and we keep it's, it's something we've been talking about for a long time and like I was dead wrong. I remember like when we first did this, like when the years ago, like when we for like almost nine years ago at this point, the beginning of this podcast, 2013, I said yep. that I, I felt like the day was coming where Call of Duty would still be a very big game, but it wouldn't be like, it'd be a very big franchise, but it'd be like Madden where it sells super well. You just don't hear a lot about it. And boy, was I way wrong on that. Like I'm not wrong on the part where it's still super it's selling super well, but it's still the biggest IP. I just thought it would be like, one of like it'd be like in the clump of big ips that we see out there um but yeah i think it's it this would be the first time if this does happen 2023 it'd be the first time since 2005 where we didn't have a new call of duty but this is some like a lot of us and we talked about years ago when they announced warzone where it's like like this where does this put the premium ones in the, the full the new ones at like like it'd be kind of weird you have like this free to play one but then also you're putting out annual like annual releases and i talked to like my dad and sister, like all they play is Warzone, and uh, yeah. the, the new Call of Duties, and they'll play the new Call of Duties for like a week or two, like, like they played, uh, or maybe a month or two, or they'll jump back in randomly. But they like they'll play them for like a spurt. They go back to Warzone, and it sounds like that's the case. And I heard someone brought up a really good point about like, yeah, the sales are like it's the best selling game of last year. It's one of the it's probably be, it's one of the best selling games of last month. Uh, it's gonna probably be one of the best selling games of this year. Uh, speaking of Vanguard. Um, but so I brought up a really good point about like, yeah, that might sell you super well, but like, what are like, what are like the, um, the, uh, like people buying battle passes and like the microtransaction fees, like maybe that's where they're seeing like that big, that big price difference. Obviously we never really see those numbers. Um, no, so maybe like, maybe that's really. where they're, they're seeing like, yeah, it's sold. I, I don't know what, the, what they sell a year. I'll say it sold 20 million copies just hypothetically. And normally they may, they might make a billion dollars a year and, are you know in microtransactions all of this obviously hypothetical maybe they're looking and it's like it's doing half of that it's like yeah we can keep right. doing this and forking it out but it's like you know like at a certain point we're just kind of slowly drying them this is what we talked about when activision sold to microsoft it's like they knew they fucked up they knew that they kind of like they destroyed all their other studios to keep yeah they this did call of duty train going as long as they can um and this is the cost. <laughs> yeah. And it's like Modern Warfare 2 is coming later this year. I think I think it's going to do – that's going to make people a lot more excited for it probably. Um, and maybe that's a that's a good word. It's a good place to take a break on is Modern Warfare 2. Give it a good two years of that. Support that game for a couple of years maybe or just double down on Warzone uh, and then come back in 2024. I don't know. I mean it's weird. I don't that's know what – to... I... Go ahead. That's just the thing. You know, it's like – I think we're getting to that point where there are games in general where we just don't want to buy it every fucking year, dude. I mean, Call of Duty is just definitely one of a couple franchises I can think of where it's like they have yearly releases. And you know what? It's like people, you know, they'll go through, they'll play them. It's their game of the year or like their one game that they buy out of the year and stuff yeah. and just spend a lot of time and hours in. And But uh, especially with like Activision Blizzard and like Call of Duty franchise in general, you know, it's a lack of interest and stuff like that. And then going and seeing how well microtransactions are in cosmetic stuff and whatever the hell that they want to insert into it, doing well for like Warzone and stuff. And, uh, 
you know what they could afford to go forth and like have that stretch out for more than a couple of years you know and it's like why would you go forth with a yearly release at that point for spending all this all this income and try to do the the next major release to try to get some of the best selling stuff where you could just go and aim towards one platform have that for a span of like so long and stuff and still continue to support it and then like release an, another major call of duty game like say two or three years down the line you know yeah it's kind of like i mean we look at like on smaller scale like Assassin's creed though like yeah we, we're seeing that that's got a break right now yeah yeah it's been it's been the best thing ever for the franchise like it's funny like i've fallen off just because i don't know like i love i i like the other one the older versions before but um right the assassin's creed is bigger than ever now because we we've seen that word like um unity came out and it was it, it was it was just it wasn't a very good game it was it was it was like a right. it was like a seven seven point five but it but it came out broken and buggy but if you took out the broken the, the bugs and all that it was a seven seven point five it was an okay game but it was definitely like uh i had felt the fatigue for a long time like black uh black flag kind of like bought us like oh that was amazing because three was disappointment uh and then four right. then unity came out and that one was just meh and then uh gables remembers it and i don't for some reason even though i, I played it and beat it the one after syndicate syndicate god we've been doing this for years gables i can never remember syndicate's name even though i beat it and you've never played That's it hilarious you beat it i've never played it but yeah i can remember its name more yeah i don't understand it like i think <laughs> i told you guys i'm i'm losing it and i'm i think at 32 i'm close to getting 33 here I'm finally breaking down. Um, but anyways, like we've seen that where uh, that fatigue hit, uh, you know, like Black Flag probably kind of uh, extended that kind of like Black Flag is the modern warfare uh, in this sense where like kind of like brought everybody back for a little bit and then they kind of dip right back down. Um, and then maybe a gap will do it and just kind of like go back to the drawing because look at they have these three big main studios working on it. Um, but they probably don't have like a lot of time to like, they've been essentially like using the same engine for a years now. Uh, no shit. Maybe give some of them a chance to, you know, maybe we're getting, look at getting at that. I mean, the games look beautiful, but it's like maybe a new engine would be great. And they go to unreal engine five or, um, look at some different ones or, I don't know. Maybe it's like a telltale type of situation where it's like, like they just kind of keep, stretching this thing and morphing it and like it's frankenstein's monster of an engine um maybe gives them a chance to take a break and look at something different here and totally redo the entire franchise um for what we know um so i don't know yeah it's like yeah you can keep pumping these things out and making billions of dollars a year and millions hundreds of millions of dollars a year but you know it's like eventually five years from now though you might you you know, you've like I said, we talk about over and over again. Like, you destroyed everything else to to keep this one thing going, and in five years yeah. from now, you might have ran that thing into the ground, um, and you destroyed you know, you destroyed everything else you have to keep this thing just to get an extra few years out of it. Um, so How ironic. Yeah. So Activision Blizzard running something into the ground. Yeah, but obviously <laughs> with with you know, vibes are a lot better now with. Um, you know, Microsoft owning it. So obviously that's not going to be the case because yes. they're, they're going to have a lot more free reign probably to do what they want to do. But um, but if this if Microsoft wasn't there, I feel like it'd be a lot worse. Um, yes. It, well, it was a lot worse. Uh, but moving on here. Uh, so I wanted to give us a quick fantasy critic update. Give me a second here. I had it open and I closed it like a dumbass. Uh, so give me two seconds, guys. Give me two seconds. Gable's going to be, I, I sent Gable's a message uh, the day the reviews dropped for Elden Ring. Uh, and it mm-hmm. just said, I just called him a cunt. And I don't regret it. And I'm not taking it back. I'm not apologizing. I meant it. Right. Because um, Gable's, right. you're a cunt. But the first pick of the draft, he drafted the Elden Ring. Um, and something I forgot was the fact that uh, every point over 90, you get two points. So right now, um, Elden Ring is at a 90 fucking six. So Gables has 32 points for fucking Elden Ring. Um, have I called you a cunt lately, Gables? 
because you're a cunt. All right. <laughs> What's I funny hate you. about that is like I had like 35 points heading into the release of Elden Ring from the games I had. And yeah. That one game just literally just shot me back into contention. <laughs> yeah. So right now, uh, I have 98 points. Um, with eight games released, Gables has 66 points with four games released. Um, let me scroll through here. So yeah, so 90s, he's at 96 for Elden Ring, got 32 points for that. King of Fighters 15 lost two more points. It's down to 81. Um, Horizon Forbidden West is at 89, so I got 19 for that. Um, wow, this just updated Gables. This wasn't here 10 minutes ago. Oh, really? The Witch Queen, Gables, sitting at a motherfucking 90. Oh, really? A motherfucker. Wow. I got 20 points for that. I'm probably going to lose. It's probably going to drop a little bit, but still. I That was just an... I, I didn't even care if I got five points for that. That was just an FU to Gables. This is perfect. Really? A 90. A fucking 90. It's actually my... my it's, it's higher than Forbidden West. It is my highest ranked game right now. Um, Forbidden West, that mm-hmm. oh, God. but it'll, it'll drop. I, I think Forbidden West is like a ninety-one when the reviews first drop. So they, Dude, all... that's that's not gonna that is not gonna sustain itself. No, no. but I will. I'm gonna rub that in your fucking face right now, with Gables. Fuck you, Gables. Ha. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I got a thirty-point lead, but I've got eight games out. Gables got four games out. Okay, well, um, let's see. Out of how many reviews here? That's about five critic reviews, and let's see. Oh, minimum is like about five. You have Attack of the Fanboy, GG Retcon. But yeah. Why, that, that, though? That. Spring round game trending. Unscored. But yeah, that's definitely good, favorable reviews so far from yeah. Destiny 2 The Witch. So the, the, the big, like, the big, big ones haven't come out yet, like um, like uh, uh, like an IGN GameSpot. And like, all their, like, they're going to have IGN Spain and IGN Italy and GameSpot. What I will say is, Russia do not expect that to be at ninety percent. No, I, I imagine it'll drop down to the eighty somewhere. But for right now, Gables, yeah. I'm celebrating. We're drinking fucking beers. Hurrah! Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, um, we have uh, some other games coming out. Uh, oh my god, we do have games coming out uh, next week yes, on Friday. Uh, Gables has Triangle Strategy, and I have Grand Theft Auto Seven coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the week after <laughs> WWE 2K22, I forgot I bought that for a dollar. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that one. I feel like that one, if, if I just get like, oh my god, if I get high sevens, I'll be happy. Um, if you get like about five to seven points out of that thing, I mean, you're you're yeah. gonna break bank. Yeah, I'll, yeah, that's a win. I I, I spent a dollar on it, so yeah, we do we do we have a decent amount of games still coming out. Through, uh, we got like seven games coming out in the month of March. Um. I drafted Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. What the fuck was I thinking? Yes, you did. Huh. I think it's one of those late thing moments when we were doing our initial podcast. We were drafting stuff. We were kind of going on tilt. It's like, okay, yeah. well, what's a good game that I can try to go through? This <laughs> you drafted Tiny Tina. It was my sixteenth <laughs> pick out of twenty. So yes, it was. I drafted Saints Row. Yes, you did. God damn it, Gables! What did I do? Oh man. I think I went too much for the nickel and dime of getting points, and then Gable swung for the fences. Ah. But Gable swung for the fences, and it's only February, so half of those games will get delayed, hopefully. Um, <laughs> what's gonna suck though if God of War hits? That's gonna be like another. That's gonna be like another ninety-five, and I'm can gonna you, be. Can you? What would you? How would you feel if, say, God of War Ragnarok releases and it not only scores higher than Forbidden West, but also gets like a ninety-six? I don't want to talk about it, Gables. Let's let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Uh, I hate that. I this was my worst idea I've ever had. I've had some bad <laughs> ideas. Um, and this is you saying this in February. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that could happen between now and obviously and the yeah, end of the like year. half of Gables games could very easily get delayed, and that would make me happy. As long as I, I, I could, I will, I will take God of War getting a 99, but. Breath of the Wild and all those other games. Breath of the Wild gets delayed 2023. I will take that. Um, if Breath of the Wild gets delayed 2023, but I ended up still getting like about 20 some odd points or something like that from God of War Ragnarok or 
heaven forbid if like a bunch of like the releases that either one of us drafted get 60s yeah right <laughs> the lose points i mean it'd probably be a good thing breath of wild 2 gets late because you're probably gonna lose points on the game because i get uh, the first one's not that good either so uh moving oh, on <laughs> moving on it's the seventh best game of 2017 gables the third best switch game of 2017 um, right a, right ahead of Switch 1 and 2, 1 plus 2, Switch, whatever that game was called, um, and way behind uh, Mario Odyssey. Uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, <laughs> I'm pissed off too many people. Uh, please like, follow, and subscribe. Uh, Street Fighter Six was uh, announced, uh, was revealed. We talked about it a lot last week. Um, we pretty much all knew it because the countdown, uh, oddly, was ending at the same time the Capcom Cup. Capcom, that's tough. It's the Capcom Cup. Um, yep. I, kept, I almost said Capcom Cup, which is a whole other thing. Uh, you could find that on Pornhub.com slash Capcom Cup. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, I've been, I've been drinking. Uh, that made me laugh. Capcom Cup. I love that. Um, <laughs> I've lost it. I think I've 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 I'm done, Gables. I think I'm done. I think I've lost it. Moving on. Um before we get to that, Capcom Fighting Collection. <laughs> now you can't stop thinking of it. <laughs> I can't stop thinking. It made me no one else is laughing at that but me. And I'm okay. It's so fucking funny. How is it not funny, people? Oh, yes. Capcom Cup. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy Gables if he wins this fantasy Creek league i'm gonna mail him a capcom cup um oh you better not <laughs> <laughs> i got your address i know i know where you live uh anyways i can never, never gonna be able to say capcom correctly anymore uh they they now say fighting collection uh is coming worldwide comes with a physical release also gables live a live live alive whatever it's called yeah. um is actually getting a physical release i, I did uh they did confirm that so like, you can pre-order right. it at like Amazon and shit like that. So that's awesome. Uh, but anyways, nice. um, uh, Capcom fighting collection. I'm, I'm, I'm a professional. Uh, they announced a, like it's the 35th anniversary of like uh, of fighting games for Capcom. Um, mm-hmm. They have, let's see here. So it's coming June 24th. Um, sorry, I went through Nintendo life and they're giving me like ads about you can buy it here for 5% off. Um, and I don't like that. What the fuck is this goddamn thing? Oh god, I'm sorry, guys. I should have pre-read this before I put it. It's just a Play Asia ad. Um, Cap, I'm googling Capcom Fighting Collection. Here we go, guys. I apologize. I am not a professional, apparently. Gables, who would have thunk that? Um, all right, here we go, Gables. PlayStationLife.net. Let's try this one out. Um, so we get Dark Dark Star Star yeah Dark Stalk. Dark Stalkers. Stalkers? Stalk- I can't talk, Gables. I've lost it. Uh, all five games are coming. Uh, Super Gym Fighter Mini mi- mini Mix. That's the kids' one, isn't it? Yes, yes. It's the Super Gym Fighter. Yes, that one was the one that was an arcade that's only been available maybe once outside of uh, the U.S. <laughs> that was through like a PS2 collection, the anniversary collection, the uh, while back, I think 2005 or so. I okay. think that was or 2003. I forget. It was close towards the end of the PS2's life cycle. Okay. All right. So here's the list. Here we got um, Dark Stalkers, The Night Warriors, Night Warriors, Dark Stalkers Revenge, Vampire Saver, The Lord of Vampire, Vampire yep. 2, Dark Stalkers Revenge, Vampire Savior 2. What? Va- okay. I got. There are five different versions, and like there's two different versions. I think of one and uh, two. I think the. Later so there's a your referred to is like arcade ports. So we have Dark Stalkers, Night Warriors, That's Vampire two. Savior. That's then we just go to Vampire Hunters Two. There was never a Vampire Hunter One. But we okay. go to Vampire Hunter Two. Okay. Then we go to Vampire Savior Two. So we go okay. Vampire Savior, Vampire Hunter Two, then Vampire Savior Two. Yep. Am I? I'm, I'm losing the cables. Red Earth, <laughs> Cyberbot Full Metal Madness, Got Super it. Gym Fighter Mini Mix, Super Puzzle yep. Fighter Two Turbo, 
Yeah. Hyper Street yeah. Fighter 2. I hate this fucking name thing. Uh, so anyways, it's 40 bucks. Um, $40 digital um, PS4, at least, on June 24th. A digital bundle is also available, including the fighting game collection and a Street Fighter 30th anniversary collection for $60. Um, the Street Fighter collection was originally released in 2018, so I guess it's already, I think it's already been out. So if you want all the extra shit, um, that's where it is. And also they announced Street Fighter 6, um, super wide edition, um, 16 wide by 9 stretched out. Um, Gables, you're the fighting guy. Uh, I'm going to sit here and think about Capcom Cup, and you tell me about all these other games. Okay, so this Capcom game collection they announced first thing. I am of the point and of the mind that if you want a new Darkstalkers game, well, here's your chance. Buy the fuck out of this game because they gave you all five fucking versions of Darkstalker. <laughs> Darkstalkers. Now you got the fucking tongue twister thing to me. Say Capcom Cup. <laughs> no. <laughs> so... Yeah, but essentially it's like you got all five versions of Darkstalkers. You got like obscure games that uh, were arcade games, never made it onto console wise, like Red Earth and Cyberbots, both of which are supposedly great games, cult classics, obviously, but now coming to console and to Switch. <laughs> but uh, you have the Pocket Fighters, which is another game that was only available maybe once or twice before in the U.S. And then Super Puzzle Fighter 2. Obviously, that was definitely one of my favorite puzzle games, like on Xbox 360, PS3, and like... Hell, I love playing... I would love to play that damn game again, because it gets so fucking addicting. Especially when you get to play with like with characters like Ryu, Ken, and all those other shit. But, uh... Dude, yeah, Super... Like Hyper Street Fighter 2 and stuff like that. That's also like the uh, best arcade version, apparently, of that game. Apparently, from what I understand, I have played a little bit of that one before, but uh, I'm more akin to Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting. That was a Super Nintendo game that was fairly fucking quick, dude. It was fucking insane the, the time and stuff. But uh, this is a solid package for $40. And my would say if you're if you are a huge fan of dark stalkers if you're a huge fan of fucking fighting games in general obscure ones man this is definitely the game to get i just want to say but, you said uh, this yeah. is a solid package yeah it's a solid fucking package dude solid fucking <laughs> here at capcom cup well we have solid packages everywhere <laughs> this is all we know i i'm done i take over gables i'll tell you what though when they unveiled the teaser trailer for street fighter 6 Looking at the character models and stuff, they definitely took a lot from the res of the RE engine inside of this damn thing. Oh, cause... yeah, this is definitely like, everything looks wet, so you know it's the RE engine. Yeah, it's the damn RE engine, but man, it's like we'll hear more about news, possibly gameplay stuff around summer. But mm -hmm. I'm already fucking hyped about this. This definitely looks a lot different in terms of graphical style than Street Fighter V. Which obviously Street Fighter V had a myriad of issues at launch. Content was first and foremost that first comes to mind. But for this, this gives me a little bit of hope of the graphical fidelity. Man, I can just imagine this fucking game being like 60 frames and just ooh, fucking silky smooth. Maybe having some rollback net code, which is definitely something they have in the fucking that Capcom collection thing. That's rollback net code. Yeah, all those games. You gotta online, you gotta yeah. assume it will because it's if. This collection has it. It'd be ridiculous if it came out. Six came out without it. Absolutely, you can't go through another fighting game, especially for Capcom, if it's a as big as Street Fighter, and not have fucking rollback netcode. Yeah, you gotta have the best of the best if you want your fucking community to go forth and play to the best of their abilities online. Especially when you're touting a lot of these digital events. We want to play shit. We want to play mm -hmm. games online. <laughs> at yeah. the best quality. That's cool, like you, um, you know, like yeah, that cap the fighting collection, and it's also gonna have online and everything, so that's pretty cool. Um, this, yeah, considering that uh, cool. that big old Street Fighter collection that they had a couple of years ago and stuff didn't have that type of stuff, despite yeah, didn't have any type of rollback netcode, and the online in itself was like hit and miss when you're trying to find different players and stuff. But uh, I'm glad they're addressing it with this upcoming collection. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Oh. So, you know, people are pretty happy. Uh, even though we didn't only really get a lot. It does suck, though. They made everybody, like, wait forever. 
for like a 27 yeah. second. I guess that having the fighting collection helps. Uh, that's probably they probably knew that because it's like a 27 second uh, uh, teaser. Um, so I, I imagine though, I, I, you gotta. I, are we? Are you? People are assuming it's coming this year because it is the 35th anniversary. I don't know. I don't think it's coming this year. I think it would be like a spring game of next year, personally. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, we're going to hear more in the summertime, so I guess we'll know more that by then. But uh, I saw, yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting. I was, I guess I just haven't heard too much about people saying whether or not they thought it was coming 2022. But I don't know. Let's wait, yeah, wait and see. But uh, I wonder if they're going to do any more for uh, Street Fighter since it is the, the anniversary. But maybe this is. It's the 35th anniversary. Yeah. So maybe this, but maybe this is like that fighting collection is like their big, um, like, thing uh, for, for this year. Uh, but one last little other news topic for the week. Uh, apparently, um, in the Xbox offices, uh, there, the words Obsidian and Fallout New Vegas 2 have been, hap- have been strung together multiple times. Now, this isn't like a confirmation that's happening um, or it's going to be a thing. This Just that there are discussions that it's going to be a th- that it could be a thing potentially. Um, Dude, it's yeah. fuck. It, that's the first thing that gamers that some gamers thought about when Microsoft bought a Obsidian mm-hmm. for yeah. God's sakes. Of course, there's discussions about the fucking sequel to Fallout New Vegas, dude. I mean, I mean, granted, you're looking at one of the best like Fallout games that released like a couple generations ago, and people could still go through and buy new if you want to go through and try to look for the physical copies. I mean, fuck, I got my. Well, my fucking Walmart, like, last year or something like that. It was brand new in the silk freaking package and this and that, you know. But uh, there's a reason why they're discussing that is because Fallout New Vegas is considerably, from what some fans consider, to be better than Fallout 3. <laughs> Especially yeah. with uh, the whole, not only just the te- well, actually, the technical aspects are almost like, were like they almost do the same at launch with their graphical hits and issues and the yeah, NPC it wasn't characters. Really buggy. Were their- yeah, exactly. Yeah. But a lot of the content, apparently, from the DLC and everything else from back then, that was solid. So it doesn't surprise me one bit that we're hearing talks between, like, Microsoft, Obsidian, and stuff, and possibly possible sequel to New Vegas. If if nothing comes from this, this is going to be a gigantic disappointment in terms of fucking potential, you know? Because it's like, here it is right in front of you. you got the same company, you have the same developer that helped create one of your most recognizable fallout games and stuff and yet you don't want to pursue a sequel to it i mean yeah come on well it's just interesting because i remember a lot of people were talking about like they felt bad for obsidian because like obsidian and uh, bethesda kind of had like a rough breakup a little bit sound like right. um and like a rough time with like the them making the game initially um so people were like and like they made like their own fallout game when they made outer worlds uh, and now yes. they're doing their own Skyrim game in Avowed, and they announced it, and <laughs> then true. they fucking buy Bethesda. Um, and <laughs> like right now, internally, I, it sounds like Avowed is a 2023, 2024 game, like a late 2023, early 2024 game. Um, okay. And that game uh, lo- looks promising. It looks like it's their Skyrim look, or Oblivion type game. Uh, then they've already announced that uh, they're working on Outer Worlds 2. So. Which Makes is sense. like their Fallout game, and people it came out and it, it got, but it, it was above average. It sounded like it was like a, a seven point five eight kind of game. Like it was a very good, uh, one of those. But I mean, you look at like what Fallout's been for a long time now. Like Fallout Four came out, a lot of people loved it, uh, but a lot of people were also were kind of like just didn't care for it. Like I talked about like a time when it came out, I was like I put like thirty five hours into it, and I'm not I'm not really sure why because I was not having any fun, uh, after like about fifteen hours, and I just kind of kept playing it and got stuck in that loop and I got up. I fell and fell. I just finally, I thought I was about to beat the game. Then I realized I had like 15 hours left and I stopped playing the game. Um, but people loved it. Some people loved it. And then like fall 76 came out and we know how that went. Um, yeah. So it's, it's when you think about it though, it's like, so Starfield is scheduled to come out in November of this year, November 11, 11, yep. uh, then after that, they're making the next Oblivion game, or uh, Elder Scrolls game rather. Um, that's probably four or five years away, at that's best. Gonna be, it's gonna be five at best. 
Yeah. So, but then we're looking at Obsidian. Avowed as a 2023-2024 game. And then after that, they're making Outer Worlds 2. That's probably going to come out late generation. twenty. We're talking mid to late 2020s. So we're talking possibly... Are we talking? Are we thinking late twenty, like twenty thirties, before we get another Fallout game? You know, I'm, it sounds insane right now, but that definitely is in the realm of possibilities where we may not see another Fallout game. Possibly, like maybe as early as twenty twenty five, maybe as late as possibly twenty twenty eight. You know, it's yeah. gonna be a close towards the end of the console generation but at the same time this is an this will be an elongated console generation for the ps5 and series x because of covid yeah i mean possibly it could be um and it just really depends on how well they sell and everything too um you can see the switch is this is probably gonna be the longest life cycle for a nintendo console ever um yep even longer than nes <laughs> yeah, and like most most of the the big most of these studios have two teams, so I guess it's possible that like maybe when the vow is out, they go straight to Fallout New Vegas, but that'd be kind of weird though because you're looking at Outer Worlds two, which is their Fallout, and then immediately afterwards putting out Fallout. So that could be weird. Like I'm not immediately afterwards, like maybe Ooh, two. Yeah. So I don't know. I. I Unless this, they tie tie in Outer World with New Vegas, I think it's gonna happen. I don't think that because like they don't yeah, want that because, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think a lot of people it'd be crazy. Cause, yeah, because think about it, we're not gonna have like a real uh Fallout game. I mean, if you like not counting seventy six, which is like an MMO style game, life service game, uh, but we're not gonna have a fall, Fallout game for. I mean, it's what twenty sixteen came out um 2015 2016 went in there somewhere uh we're talking 12 to 15 years between fall games which is nuts um especially in this you know this world that we live in now with uh, entertainment where people like sequels um so i don't know Absolutely. we'll have to wait and see um but yeah i think that's gonna do it for the news part of the week cables uh I've just been. I'll, I'll just go real fast, Gables. Um, okay. I've just been playing more Horizon Forbidden West. Um, I am now. So I haven't got a chance to play much during the week. Last week when I talked to you, I, I was eleven hours in. Uh, yep. But uh, basically, from I, I I stopped. I told Gables for uh, uh, we started podcasting after work yesterday. Um, I uh, I took my my sister had to pick me up because my car's in the shop. And I we uh, I bought her Starbucks and everything, and then um, I drank from Starbucks and I stayed up till Gables. I made it to almost midnight last night playing fucking. Oh shit! Oh boy, that's late. That's late for Tyler. <laughs> uh, I stayed up pretty late and um, drank some Star. I had Starbucks and I stayed up, played shit ton of fucking Horizon, and then guess what I did today? Gables played more Horizon. I'm 25 hours in now. Uh, nice. <laughs> Like I probably put like 13 hours in in the last like 24 hours, give or take. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I am still loving it. Uh, like I said, I put a ton of time in doing uh, when I turned when I booted it up on Friday. My plan was to I'm, all right, I'm gonna knock out the next main quest, uh, and then maybe do a couple main quests if you go in here, and then open up more of the world. And, like the the whole world's open, but like just want to just knock those out and then go um, right right and then on to that quest i'm like what's that over there i'm gonna go over there then i went over there and then i went over there yeah. and then i went over there and then i went over there and then i went over there yeah. uh so anyways i i played like another 13 hours uh this week <laughs> or in the last like 24 hours and I, I i literally beat a story mission right before i hopped on with you gables uh <laughs> that was like the last like hour um I Dude, just spent awesome. all day, all night yesterday and all day today just doing side missions. And some of the side missions, like, there's a lot of the ones where it's like, oh, my my sister went over and said she went to go do this and she hasn't come back in three days. Could you go look? There's those ones. And then there's some, like, pretty, like, substantially awesome ones where, like, they're, like, they're different side missions, but there's, like, different, there's, like, there's a whole story to it. And, like, there's, they right. actually, there's, like, 
more important side story. They do a good job, I think, of like they have like side missions, and they have like errands, and then they have like they have different lo- like levels of side missions um, that I think are pretty good. Uh, and I like that. Like in some are, in, you can usually kind of get an idea of which ones are more important. And like this, I did. The, I ended up like following this whole side mission for like five hours, uh, and just um, doing all that. And like it led to like a really cool and satisfying like finale with these characters and like you had to pick a side at the end and like fight the other guy um depending on what side you picked um but uh yeah i've just been having a fucking blast just like exploring the world and like there's definitely like it's got the ubisoft like bloat a little bit to it where like you open up the map and there's just a million fucking things on there um it's a map game uh but it's like you know i look at like i was kind of talking about a little bit last week where it's like I'm like fall like Far Cry Six to play like six hours because it's just another shooter game. But like the combat and the gameplay and the machines and the fights are so awesome and epic to me that I just love getting like I, I just love getting these fights and, and fighting the, like fighting these robots. It's like there's new robots. Gables, I scream like a fucking girl at one point where they the one of the enemies is like an armadillo. But like he does like yeah. the fucking roll thing like Miltank did in goddamn Pokemon Gold and Silver, scared the fucking shit out of me. I like ah! like it scared the fuck out of me. I, I did not expect it. It just started charging at me. I'm like oh my fucking god! Like I dodged like oh man, it was it was incredible. It was like a legit like I have a lot of them Roll out. Yeah, I, I yeah exactly. I um I haven't screamed like that since I played PT. Um. It okay, was, that's that's pretty sizable. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. Gable heard me play that game. Yeah, he he listened to me play that game. I was screaming like a goddamn child. Uh, it was yeah. Like I, I fought like with a mammoth, like the the giant fucking mammoth one. I finally bumped in one of those My. fuckers. My god, like it's just like we talk about like that big fight feel sometimes in these games and like in video games are some of the best parts. There's just several moments of like big fight. Like like I I saw like uh, I'm like oh. I saw one of them. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I was like, I found a thunder jaw, and I'm finally like, a higher enough level. I'm like, I'm gonna go fight that guy. Right. Uh, and then I went. I started fighting him, and then another thunder jaw came over a sand dune. I'm like, oh, I gotta go. I'm fucking out. I just <laughs> fucking ran. I'm like, I gotta go. I never run. I put oh, off more than I could chew. Bro, where it just takes you like about a fucking like ten minutes just to take one out. All of a sudden, another one's like, hey, what's going on? Over yeah, here? I got like, oh, I got his health down like halfway, and I'm like. Oh fuck! I gotta go, guys. <laughs> I just saw him like kind of like, oh no, I'm done. I'm out. Cause like a couple shots, you, you they get you in a corner. You're you're dead. Uh, I did. I found Las Vegas in this game. Uh, that's oh. fucking badass. That's cool. I've been seeing some like um, cool landmarks and stuff. Like some of it, I don't like. No, I think I. You found Las Vegas. That's hilarious. I think I might have found Yellowstone, but I'm not sure. I don't feel comfortable with sand. I'm probably wrong. Um. But I found like uh, like a, it, was, it was like a really big national park, and I don't know what else not what other national parks are in that general vicinity. Um, so I don't know what it is. I, I just assumed it's Yellowstone, but I'm probably wrong on that one. So don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, I'm just having a blast going around and like like the story is amazing and it's cool. Like every time I beat a story mission, I'm like I can't wait because I, I fucking love these characters they're introducing. I love the characters from the old game. I love Aloy. I love all of this. Um, I'm like, I'm going to go, I can't wait to jump into the next, but like the fucking story is getting awesome. I I, I just want to point that out. Like it is going places that I not expect to go. And I fucking right. love it. I, I'm like, I want to know what's going on with these more, these, and this, they've introduced these new enemies. And I'm like, I want to know what's going on with these fuckers. Uh, they look badass. I want to know more about their backstory, but then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go on the next mission. I'm like, well, what's that over there? I'm going to go over there and I go over there and like eight hours goes by. And I'm like, fuck, I don't even know. I, I totally forgot what I was doing. I'm like, oh shit. The, the story mission's like 3000 meters back. I'm like, fuck. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, so like I said, I'm 25 hours in. Uh, I'm at like level 28 now with my character. Um, the story missions. Uh, I was like neck and neck with like, I was like right at the level you're supposed to be for the story missions. I'm now like 10 right, levels right. over the story missions. Um, oh, of course. Yeah, so I've just been going like crazy. I do have like some minor complaints. Like I don't the climbing I don't love so much. Uh, where it's hard to tell what you can and can't like jump to and climb up. Uh, so like the accessibility options are pretty cool. Where like 
I did turn on the accessibility option where, because uh, if you hit like the R3, it does like a focus thing and it'll show you yeah. like all like the things you can like, it'll show you like where like, it'll give you like a little teaser, like where the treasure chest over there or like there's like the plants you can pick or here's like, it'll give like a yellow glow of the things you can climb. I just turned it on so that it'll tell me like, it'll just have a yellow glow to whatever I climb on. It's just there all the time, which just makes it a lot easier. Cause oh, sometimes okay. I go to jump I have a thing and I'll jump to it and I can't actually climb on it. But I'm like, why can't I climb on that? But not that. So that, there's that kind of an issue. Uh, I feel like they went a little too crazy with the, like uh, with the, the uh, like upgrading and stuff like that, where um, they like, so you always have like different gear you can wear and you can add like coils to them that give you like little buffs. Right. But now you can uh, upgrade every individual piece of like, uh, like your outfits your weapons and you have like it's kind of like you would see in like uh, a far cry in a sense where you have to like add like certain components this is why components and stuff like knocking components off enemies is more important than ever because you need those to like upgrade your equipment um right so like they've gone a little crazy on that where like everything has like you can upgrade all your individual stuff and it's like i don't like just i do i'm doing way more grinding trying to do that like that's the good chunk of my time is just doing that and i'm not really liking that part but it's like and like the nice thing is like if you need a certain thing, you can create a job, and it will tell you on the map the local like the kind of vicinity it's in, so you can go there. Okay. But it's like now I gotta go search for it. I don't want to. I just like I like the other game where it's just like you you like look you could just compare the fucking things like this outfit to that outfit. Oh, that one's better. I'm going with that one. And you did it, and then you can have some coils to give you some like minor buffs. And now it's like okay, well this one's better. Like I, I'm like level three with this one now, but. If I get to level five with this one over here, it'll be way better than this one. So I'm going to upgrade it. I'm going to be shittier now, but like five, six hours from now, I might get upgraded enough that I'm better now. Um, oh, okay. So it's kind of shit like that. I know it's just way more. I spending way more time in menus than I want to. Not, a, I'm not saying it's like, it's not a lot of time, but it's, it's an, it's enough time that I'm noticing I'm spending time in menus and I don't want to do that. Um, these are minor, Bye. minor Bye. gripes. Like I said, I put 25 hours into this and these are, minus school like little gripes i have um with with that well like those are like those are the two big ones really it's just the climbing gets a little confusing of like what can i can can i climb and then um a little too crazy with like um you know inventory management which is that but the nice thing is like the other one you can only carry so many things in this game uh and the first one you can only carry so many things even when you max out your inventory your uh capacity you can still only carry so much on this one. You can only carry so much, but whenever you pick something up, it automatically puts it in like your stash. And then you, whenever okay. you get to a town or wherever, it's a, like a giant fucking chest and you can go pull those things out of the chest, which is awesome. It's kind of like, um, uh, uh, like in Pokemon legend Arceus where like, you know, you can put stuff in like your stash, but it does it for yes. you automatically. You don't have to go back to your chest to put it in there. Oh, that's uh, it nice. just so like I I'll, oh. I like I can only carry like so many healing items, but like I might kill them in a mini like I pick up a healing item off of them, and then I'll pick it up, but it'll just go straight to my my stash, and then I can go pick it up later, which is amazing. I like it. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so like uh, the small thing that makes a big big change, but uh, and that helps a lot too, especially in this game where you're like there's so many more components and plants and so many different upgrading equipment than the first game that they had to put this, otherwise it'd be impossible. Uh, but that's the only thing I'm playing. I still love it. Uh, it's probably gonna take me a month to beat, but uh, that's fine. Uh, I got like a month until Kirby comes out, so I have nothing else going on. So, uh, okay. Cables, we've been playing, buddy. All right. Before I get into that, though, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a short little break. But I will be right back. Okay. <laughs> back. Okay. Take a few seconds, then I'll chime in. All right. When it comes to games I've been playing this week, there has been one, and I'm hell bent at finishing this game up this upcoming week because I have another game that I do have that I will be starting upon fairly soon. I'm going to keep mum of what it is, but at the same point, I want to delve deep here inside of more Splatoon 2. Nice. Which, as of this recording, I'm about 15 hours into this game. I have plenty of experience now going through a bunch of the levels in regards to the single player aspect of it 
I have played roughly like around 35 matches or so around online. Just regular battle stuff. Nothing like intense. I'm not at level 10. I have no desire to do any ranked stuff for Splatoon 2. Especially when you have Splatoon 3 releasing later this year. But even with doing the regular battles, the game is fucking fun. I mean, I chimed in last week in regards to, okay, I started Splatoon 2. I've done like various other little stuff. But uh, at the same time... When it comes to the levels of Splatoon 2, I mean, these things are... These levels are fucking creative as shit. I mean, there are some fun aspects of the early levels that are introduced to you to, like, different type of concepts and stuff. There are specific levels where you have to use the specific weapon that uh, Sheldon goes through and, uh, like, has you use. And I love the fact that they want you to go forth and clear the game... To clear the level the first part with a specific type of, like, weapon... So that way, when you go through and delve into the level again, you can choose whatever type of weapon you unlock in order to complete the level that way. As a recording, I also have unlocked my last weapon in regards to single player, which is that little paintbrush. It's mm. the paintbrush, the melee weapon to where if you press the R button repeatedly, it'll do all this like rapid like uh, like a brush like attacks and stuff like that. And if you hold down the R button, it acts sort of like how the uh, paint roller is where you can go through and just start uh, painting on the ground and stuff. But, uh, you know, the concept, a lot of the weapons and stuff, I'm fairly liking. Obviously, the standard blaster is pretty fun. I've got that upgraded to level 3, because I was doing a little bit of grinding upon, like, uh, the boss of, like, World 2. And another thing is, like, the boss, um, I've actually quite enjoyed the bosses, you know? It's like, you have the uh, first one, it was, like, pretty much like a... Like the octopus sort of like toaster thing where like the boss is like a fucking like oven with a big old freaking thing of bread and stuff like that shooting out and stuff. You have to climb the bread in order to try to attack the freaking octopus tentacle at the top. Then of course like uh, the boss world 2 is actually fairly fun. It's like it's more like a samurai. And I, I thought it was pretty cool how you have to use the paint roller in order to try to defeat this boss. And that's the thing. Every level so far that has a boss you have to use a specific weapon. Like, for the level 1, like, World 1 was, like, just the original, and then, like, the paint roller for level 2. World 3, I believe it had to do with, like, um, well, no, it's not the sniper one, but it's, like, something else. I forget which one of it, but the boss of World 3 and stuff, that was pretty fun it's, itself. It was, like, a retread of uh, one of the original bosses of the original Splatoon. <laughs> so, that was pretty funny, just doing, like, that whole, like, stamp that stamp thing and all of a sudden you have to it's not just like the was before it actually has like a couple of pieces of armor attached onto the freaking boss itself but yeah the boss battles have been increasingly fun the one i got done with before delving into uh world five and stuff was uh, it had to do with the sniper the sniper rifle stuff so it's like you have the boss that's being held up by a couple of like minion balloons and stuff and what you're trying to do is try to navigate this field right and stuff and try to get close enough to where you can snipe off a couple of the little like balloons and stuff so that way you can go and just do massive damage upon the boss before it goes and recycles the another attack cycle and stuff but uh what i'm quite enjoying upon it is actually going deep inside the levels to where i want to collect the uh pieces like the pages out of the book that you are getting that you are given and stuff so in hindsight right here, you have a couple different things. It's like you have, you can collect a lot of the pages in each level. It's like each level, it represents one piece of like uh, this book and stuff. And then also it includes like a sardinium, which is like one of those little salmon sort of tokens or something that you collect. Basically, you'd use those on top of the currency, which is like salmon eggs in order to increase the potency of your weapons and stuff. And I thought it was pretty funny that uh, you have like a different types of like you have those different types of currency where you're going through each individual level and stuff. You got to try to find where the Sardinium and where the pages are at. And in later levels, they can get increasingly hard to try to locate, which is kind of funny. It's like, I'm past level 22. I still need to get the Sardinium for level 22. There's like 27 levels in total, not counting the uh, final boss, which so it's like 28 stages in general, hmm. right? Each world has their own sardinium and like a page or something like that you get gotta go through and collect well not maybe not like a page but like uh, a sticker it's a sticker through each world so once you collect that sticker you got from that world you can go through you can like... use the stickers on me verse 
Oh no, not like the original one though. I mean, you, the original one I think had that feature. I want to say, but no. I just want to no. bring up Meverse because it still breaks my heart. Instead, dude, you know what's kind of funny? It's like one Meverse feature that was actually kept in from kept in in Splatoon Two is like the aspect where you can post something to a social media site, right? Yeah. And then we go to specific octolings inside, no, inklings inside of like the hub world and stuff. They'll actually have little messages that look yeah, like straight out. Yeah, always funny. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I mean, oh my gosh, and stuff like that. I mean, the, you could tell there's like there's like a bunch of kids that are on there because they'll just have just stupid stuff or something. But there is some that are fairly cool looking artistic stuff. When I'm like, how the hell did you do that with two analog sticks and the button with that I'm, shit? Yeah, Jeff. I remember Jeff Gritzman had one on there about uh, hot dogs, and it was like the day I when it first came out, it was up there for like weeks because it was like the most popular one. <laughs> oh my gosh but that core aspect of the community is pretty fun but one thing i didn't know about in regards to the levels is there's a little tap at the bottom of the little uh marker for each level you can complete it has a little like tracker thing of what you complete a level with what type of weapon so with all the weapons and stuff, you could technically go through each level with every single weapon and it'll keep track of that. So I'm kind of wondering if that actually has to go through and uh, contribute to something else, like say in terms of like a better weapons in regards to what or whatever. I'm kind of curious about that. But right now my focus with Splatoon 2 is finish off the rest of the story missions, obviously. I mean, I got about a handful of them left, like five or six. And I still need to go forth and get the last sticker on the last world stuff on top of the final boss with it. But uh, I have enjoyed myself immensely playing Splatoon 2. I mean, it's really fucking fun. It has a lot of personality like it did with the original game. It has some creative boss battles and stuff. And honestly, it's done its job. I'm more excited to play Splatoon 3 when that eventually does release this year. So... Yeah, Splatoon 2, definitely fun. I definitely would pick this up at uh, any type of discount that you can go for it and find it. Like, I got mine from Amazon for, like, about 40 45 or so. So it was under the norm of 60 like it would for general retail. I think it was, like, 50 at Walmart. But, uh, yeah, Walmart's the one that's been kind of doing discounts and sort of certain new mm -hmm. releases. Good. So you said you're – what's the game you're going to jump into afterwards? Would you like to know? <laughs> am I gonna am I gonna use the C word again? Oh boy, I'm gonna use. The C All right, word. I'll show you. So the game that I'm purposely not playing right now until I finish Splatoon Two because I feel like I will not go back to Splatoon Two if I actually go forth and start playing it. I bought Elden Ring. What a cunt! <laughs> Jesus. In you want to know the funny part about this is, is like, the very same day this game releases, I go to one of my favorite restaurants, right? One of my favorite Chinese food restaurants. Taco Bell? And I... No. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, stealing for this. But, uh... <laughs> no, no. What's hilarious is, like, I was speaking with one of the receptionists, this girl... Goes for this, like, you know, we're just making idle conversations. Like, she's like, Yeah, I bought a new game. I bought Elden Ring today. And I'm thinking to myself, it's like, Holy shit. When was the last time I actually heard, like, somebody in the actual public go through and talk about a game release of that day that they went through and bought and actually want to talk about it and stuff mm -hmm. like that? I, I thought it was kind of hilarious because when I went inside Walmart Friday morning, I went in there, you know, they had already sold most of their PS5 copies. It was like 7.30 in the fucking morning. Jesus. <laughs> and so it's like, uh, there was like a couple copies, and there was still a slew of PS4 copies, right? I mean, that <laughs> thing didn't look like it was touched. And I look at, I look at, it was one of those moments where I go to the guy behind the, the electronics, like, yeah, I want to get this game right here. <laughs> and I tell him, yeah, you're going to probably sell out of this before the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, you're probably going to need to get some more copies. Oh my gosh. But uh, yeah, it's it was just the off thing where it's like, rarely do I hear 
hear about a game on the spell of release and stuff while I'm going through my everyday things and stuff, if I'm going to get food from somewhere, if I'm going to do this or do that and stuff. But yeah, I'm highly excited to try out Elden Ring from software. That's the thing. Even when this year started, I wanted to delve deep into from software games. I have Dark Souls. I have Demon Souls. And quite honestly, this is the best entry point I could possibly do in order to in not only just introduce myself, but build upon. So I'm giving Elden Ring a shot. And we'll see what happens. Cool. I'm glad, I'm glad you picked it up. Um, yeah, It's funny. You have Horizon Forbidden West and stuff. A big old open world game. And then the reason why I didn't even pick up Horizon is because I still <laughs> was knee deep in the original game. And then it's like, you know what? Elder Ring's getting great reviews. It looks like it's one of those transitional, like genre-defining games. I'm like, fuck, I can't miss this damn thing. I gotta buy it. I it wanna was, buy this. You know what the two highest-rated games on Metacritic are in the last five years? What? Breath of the Wild and Elder Ring. You know what those two games have in common? What? They, they came out the week after Horizon. <laughs> Subsequently, Horizon gets fucking buried by another open world game. It's fucking bullshit. It's one of the best games of all time. And it gets buried by a mediocre game. I, I just, I hate Breath of the Wild. And I hate, even though it's my seventh favorite game of 2017. Uh, and I will, I refuse to play Elden Ring. Not, I don't refuse to play Elden Ring because I'm just kind of talking shit now. Uh, I'm not going to play this game. Uh, and it's going to get buried. And when Game of the Year comes along, no one's going to talk about fucking Horizon, even though it's going to be one of the best games of the year. Uh, because fucking Elden Ring. I'm going to hate Elden By the time... I'm going to go back to old school fanboy, Tyler, where I'm going to hate this game just because... Just for no reason. I'm going to have no reason to hate this game other than people forget about the games I like because this, if God of War comes out this year and people are like, ah, oh, yeah, but Elden Ring, I'm like, fuck off! I can't do <laughs> it! I can't do it. I'm, 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 I am I'm hate Elden Ring. And I, I'm just going to say it. The shitty fanboy in me is coming out on this one. Fuck Elden Ring. I said it. Title of this podcast. Fuck Elden Ring. Or it's going to be Capcom Cup. Or it's going to be Gables is a Cunt. Uh, it's going to be one of those three. Uh, <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Um, yeah. Anyways, Gables, I hope you enjoy it. I'm not. I don't really hate Elden Ring. It just drives me nuts. Oh, I understand. I understand. I mean, well, for, well, for one, it was definitely fucking unfortunate that as great of a series as Horizon is, you know, Horizon, like, Forbidden West, for, and everything in that regards, just that franchise in general of Horizon, that it comes out, and, like, no fault of its own and stuff, there's more games that come out, and all of a sudden, they get more recognition than what yeah. the work that uh, Guerrilla Games put inside those games. I mean... It, yeah. Forbidden West is the second highest rated game of the year so far. Uh, obviously, it's early. It was the third highest rated game of 2017. Uh, and it's just, I mean, not I should say no, but it, it, but it gets buried. It gets buried. It doesn't get the record. It's fucking fantastic. People play it. God damn it. All right, move. We, we got to get in the show. Uh, I'm, I'm breaking down. Uh, I'm getting old. Uh, anyways, if you liked all this, you liked the show. Uh, sorry for me losing it this week. Um, between just overall tiredness and Capcom Cup. Uh, just I'm out of it this week. Um, but if you like all this, please, uh, like follow, subscribe, comment, five stars, reviews, whatever, wherever you're listening to, wherever you're doing. Uh, if you're driving right now, just pull the phone out. Don't even look at the, don't even look at the road. You're fine. Uh, that, that truck in front of you is not slowing down or stopping whatsoever. Just keep going. Uh, and like follow, subscribe, um, but do it really fast. Um, I mean, if it's the last thing you do, which it probably will be if you listen to me. Uh, but anyways, I wish I was Tyler. And this has been Colonel Gables. Until next time, I hope you have yourself a fun week. Definitely go through and invest yourself in some fun game time. I mean, come not, on, not you deserve it. You work all these, you work all these fucking hours and stuff. You got to go forth and play something to keep your mind off of stuff. But most importantly of all, thank you for listening to another fun-filled episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds podcast. And hey, Gables. Yeah. Elder Ring is a cunt. You're sweet, everyone. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya.